everybody, my name is Luke Marr and this is Hot Love Mode. And today on Hot Love Mode, we are coming to you with a reaction to Sadie Sink from Stranger Things' 7 Day 7 looks from Vogue. I didn't want to film this until I'd actually caught up on Stranger Things season four. Now that I'm feeling my Kate Bush moment, I'm living, I'm laughing, I'm loving. We had to react to Sadie. She's a Miu Miu Chanel Prada woman. Sometimes I feel like maybe even Louis Vuitton. She's a fashion girl in her own way. And I'm intrigued by this video. I think it's going to be interesting. I think from what I've seen thus far, it's very realistic 77 looks, but it's gonna be good regardless. Before we get any further into the video, I wanna say a huge shout out to today's sponsor who is Incognate. With the rise of spam calls, emails, and bogus junk mail in my mailbox, I hate that my personal information is swirling around on marketing and advertising databases that can contact me anytime, any place. But luckily, Incognite is a service that systematically gets your personal information off of these databases over time without you having to ever interact with data brokers who sell off your details to whoever is willing to pay for them. Things like your full name, your email, your phone number, your home address, your social security number, your IP address, your employment history, and worst of all, your shopping habits are common finds within these data companies and it's a real hassle to find who has your information. And even more so, it's a hassle to contact each one of them to get them to remove said information. But Incogni does that all for you because when you sign up for Incogni by going to incogni.com slash mode, which gives the first hundred people who do it 20% off Incogni. Incogni then will reach out to data brokers on your behalf requesting your personal data be removed and dealing with their objections because I can only imagine the objections that they object. Incogni also allows you to see who they are contacting on your behalf and will give you updates on their progress, which I found fascinating and also terrifying because it's like over a hundred plus companies. It was like 120 something, like that's too many. One is too many, but 120 something is way too many. Now, I don't know about you, but recently I've been getting lots of spam phone calls from all over the world and I find it not only super annoying, but frustrating. As phone calls to me are for super important things like emergencies or hours long catch up, not for someone to telling me to collect my auto insurance rebate. I live in New York. The only auto insurance I need is to make sure I can get a cab when I'm late for something. And I can't stand it when I receive junk mail in my mailbox. I find it so wasteful as it always gets shredded or ripped up. So to see like paper and plastic being used for such unnecessary things like junk mail, I try to minimize it as much as I personally can. The other great thing is Incogni's website is so easy to use. And I love the fact that they give updates on how the process is going. It's nice considering all my data can't be removed overnight. There's a lot of it, but it's also cool to periodically check in to see how the whole process is going. And I like getting little update emails about like, hey, this is what we removed. So if you want to protect your very valuable personal information and avoid the hassle of spending hours on calls with marketers, you can go to incogni.com slash mode. And again, the first hundred people to use my link will get 20% off of Incogni. So to protect your privacy today, go to incogni.com slash mode and use that code mode to take your personal data off the market. And so now without further ado, let's get right into this video. Hi Vogue, Ooh. my name is Sadie Sink and this is 7 Days, 7 Looks. Hi Sadie, nice to see you. The look that we're choosing here is a choice. It's Dior. I don't think it's from the runway. Pretty positive it's like based on a look from the spring 2022 ready to wear collection. It existed. Probably the best Maria Grazia collection we've seen recently, but particularly green and orange oversized silk pajama set suit with a giraffe and chevron motif. Not the best at all. Let's see how it's gonna go. Okay, so from what I'm seeing, it just seems very casual, which I think is what the vibe is gonna be. This is a dinner with friends kind of look. I mean, listen, let's like just analyze here. It looks like it's a sort of brown tweed cropped blazer with a very sharp shoulder, black sort of tank top, oversized or like sort of mom jean and a black Mary Jane pump, black belt, little red bag. It's not, oh my God, wow, iconic, amazing, but it's also like not bad. I would not wear it. It's a pretty, 
standard Sadie outfit, just jeans, okay. blazer, maybe a heel, maybe a sneaker, depending on how I'm feeling. And then a pop of okay. red. This is Saint Laurent. Pretty much all Saint Laurent. We love a Saint Laurent. I stand by the thing of learning how to say it if you wear it and or work with them and or buy it. You know, we're paying thousands of dollars. So we just learn. Drop the tea. Not that hard. Promise. And then some Levi jeans. Okay, cute. It's very true to kind of my style. Shoulder pads. I love the jacket. We see a lot on Stranger Things. Very trendy in the 80s. I really like that blazer. I think it's very cute, very sleek, very easy, very nice. I feel like a lot of young people wouldn't be like, oh, I'm gonna buy like a brown tweed blazer. I kind of love that that's what she's gone for. And it seems very like simple and conservative and easy and if that's really like how she shops i respect it it might actually be like a genuine 77 looks as much as i do love a crazy over the top moment i also respect this it's kind of different from other blazers that i have just because there's more of like i love shape, that blazer. So it feels a little yeah. bit more dressy and also it's cropped too it's not like mm -hmm. a, you know one of my slouchy blazers and the jeans fit in the, the hem shoes. Of them too it just hits at a really nice place that makes them feel a little bit more dressy. I think it's just like sort of casual everyday wear for a modern person. I really do like the pumps. I think they're cool. I like the Mary Janey patent leather aspect of them. The only thing that's really like out there zany, I would say, is the pop of the red. But besides that, it's just nice clothes, which I don't think is a bad thing. Also, I think it just depends on like who you are. There's some people that really just go crazy over the top out there. And there are other people that just buy nice sort of simple clothes and that's what they wear in their everyday lives. That's not a bad thing either. All right, Tuesday. This is a look that I've been dying to wear for a while. It's a perfect summer look. Okay. It's a little bit baggy for me, I would say, but I'm intrigued by the accessorization. I kind of like these like platformy shoes and the bag, intriguing. I just think that blazer's big, but I'm willing to hear it out. I'm willing to hear it out. I'm going in this, but this is this seems like the perfect excuse to wear it. It's full Mew Mew. These oh. are she is a Mew Mew woman. She loves a Mew Mew. She really, really does. Some creepers that Oh, I love those. I think they're great. I think they're funky. They're very Prada. The crystals, the big sort of stud crystals have a very, I would say like what, punky sort of influence, but done in the all white with the crystals makes it very Prada-y. I would say very glitzy and glimmery and young. And Miu Miu is the brand that Mrs. Prada always says she wished she would have dressed like when she was a young woman. And so I think it's always cool to sort of see these, these influences. I can't wear them casually. I never know when to wear them. They go perfect with this outfit, but they're certainly a statement. And then this is- A statement shoe is never like inappropriate. I would say. I think a statement shoe is always on trend. I think statement shoes are on trend, the trend of life. I think it's important. I think it always works. Listen, am I going to say that I'm wearing a statement shoe right now? Yeah, kind of. My Birkenstocks are gray fur. So, statement shoe never hurts. I walk around my apartment in a statement shoe. Just saying. It's a cute little purse, also Mew Mew. Oh, let's go back to her. So, this is a matte lace bag. I looked it up. It's called the Sassy Matte Lace, which I like. You know, I love a sassy over here. But the matte lace is a sort of texture that is inherent to the Mew Mew brand. And matte lace, if you don't know, is actually a sort of way of quilting different fabrics. So you can see a lot of matte lace in like interior design fabrics, upholstery fabrics. That's kind of where you see it the most. Usually matte lace is made either on like a jacquard loom, which gives it that sort of 3D texture, or it's made using a quilting machine. So that's, again, why you get that 3D texture where obviously it's a motif, but it's not just a motif because it is textured. It does have a bit of a rise. It's the way that it's either woven on a loom or it's the way that the fabric is manipulated to create that quilted sort of texture and ridging and movement. It's really cool. I think it's sweet. It's very much of a Prada staple bag. I believe it came around in the 2000s, maybe late 1990s. I couldn't get a 100% grasp on the bag. I tried to do some research, but I couldn't find it. So maybe I need to do a Mew Mew video here or there. But cool bag definitely has come back, I think, with the sort of return of Mew Mew as a brand that everybody's sort of keeping an eye on. I like it. I also think the white pairs with the creeper well. It makes sense. And then the pink in the fit is actually just being, you know, the main 
color swatch. People always ask me like, oh, like, do you avoid certain colors? I don't, I really don't pay attention to it. There's definitely certain colors that I gravitate towards, maybe subconsciously. We know that I like never really talk about people's like personal appearances, but I would say as somebody that is like a stunning ginger human being with a beautiful alabaster complexion, there are certain colors that just really do pop super duper well. Pink I think is a nice one. I think it looks good on her. And I think it just plays off of, you know, the complexion super duper well, so. I like to see it. It's usually just like neutral colors, but this is just too fun. So I had to. <laughs> it's cute. Listen, will I say I love the fit of that big blazer? No, but I think also when you pair it with these sort of oversized little front pleat shorts, it's not bad. I don't hate it. I also would say that when you're looking at these seven day seven looks videos, it, depending on who we're looking at, there are some celebrities that go very, very heavy on the off the runway sort of kooky crazy looks. And there are some celebrities that are a little bit more demure. I think we could say that, oh, we could have put her in like a crazy pink embellished slip dress or a sheer little slip with a belt and a, you know, oversized leather jacket or pleated skirt with a oversized big baggy blazer that is from the runway in a brown plaid. We could put Sadie in those kinds of looks on here and I'd be like, oh my God, that's so crazy, we love it. But also I think brands like Miu Miu and Prada are brands that also very much so survive off of making nice, good quality clothing that customers go back to because it's nice, good quality clothing. Of course, you have those sort of crazy kooky pieces and like accessories and shoes and clothes, but I feel like people usually sort of save themselves to go for the crazy and kookier sort of creeper or bag with a strange texture than picking a clothing item that they can't, that they feel that they can only wear once or twice without it being stale. But I think that's kind of what Sadie probably is going for. And at, you know, a young age, I don't think it's a bad mindset to have necessarily. Like you're buying things evidently that you like and you want, and you're gonna wear again and again, even though you're saying, I don't know what I'm gonna wear it. This is not something that you couldn't wear. You could break up that blazer and that short really easily. It wouldn't be a problem and nobody would be the wiser. So I respect it. All right, we're on to Wednesday. Hump day. Oh. Okay, so this is my premier red carpet look. I'm intrigued, this little collarless jacket in black and then it has some sort of wavy embroidery in silver you know towards the end of the jacket and then it's sort of a silk pant the same black pumps that we've seen and a little black bag it's full chanel oh. any chance i get to wear chanel i'll do it i wore chanel to my first ever premiere which is a feat chanel i would say is very sort of picky on who they have as ambassadors and who they dress so we love to see that for sadie for season two of stranger things I was the new kid. I had just joined the Stranger Things cast. Also, now that we're here, I just want to say like the collarless element makes sense. Coco Chanel brought the collarless jacket into fashion when she was sort of doing collarless tweeds. We love to see it. I think it's very dressed up. I think definitely has an older feeling to the look in general. We'll see it when we see it and full I think I still out, do but the new kid, even though it's, I, we just filmed, I guess my third season, the show's fourth season. Um, I think I'm always gonna feel like the new kid in a way. <laughs> I think I kind of gravitate towards- Right, like let's just look at it. I would say it definitely skews a little bit older. I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it just skews a little bit more grown up. I think between the pant and the length of the jacket, it just has an older sort of feeling to it. It's not something that's like super short and mini and micro and small and tight and all that fitted sort of vibe, which I have to say, like I kind of respect it. I think it seems like from what we've seen so far, Sadie is not exactly into like a form fitting, crazy, oh my God, everything clutches to the body vibe, which I respect. But I also think that it's intriguing to see such a sort of grown up look for the red carpet, but I kind of don't hate it. It has very Chanel house codes. Maybe the pants with the shoe I'm not like totally obsessed with, but also even then it still has like an 80s sort of feeling to it, which I like. I don't know. I'm intrigued by this. Chanel also in the 1980s. Very much so. A brand of rebirth. Karl Lagerfeld got there in, what, 1983? Re-up Chanel's cool factor. When he went, everybody told him, like, don't touch Chanel. Nobody should go there. And he was like, I'll do it. So Chanel, I think, and the 1980s have a very intriguing and sort of interesting history. I would say it's maybe more so where the modern Chanel brand was birthed. I'd say the one of, what, the 20s, 30s, none of the 40s, the 50s, and the 60s is that sort of era one, but Carl in the 1980s sort of brought it into era 
2, and I'd say now we're sort of into era 3 with Virginie VR. I think this is very much like an ode to coral. I have worn color before, but for the major red carpets that I've done, it's always been like a buck or white look. She's wearing a little Chanel bag. It's quilted. It's pre-fall 2022. The jacket was paired with a big sort of flare jean, which I like that Sadie did not do that. Oh, and we can see the bag. Okay, so it's a little Chanel quilted bag, but it's like a clutch. It has the chain, very iconic Chanel. TBH really not mad about it. I think it's a good take on a look that could have ended oh so badly if we had worn those flared little jeans. So I like it. I'm here for it. Looks good. I like it for Sadie. I think it makes sense. I like the fact that she's also sort of tying in these little elements of the 1980s throughout. Cute. I don't hate this. I think it's fun. I think it makes sense. Not opposed. Okay. This would be a good interview or work meeting look. I'd probably most like okay. this to a press junket situation or something like that. It's um, okay. an acne shirt and I'm intrigued. pants with Big like slouch. a comfortable heel. These are almost like sweat. A little Chanel two-tone heel moment. We can see the black in the front and then the creamy beige on the body of the shoe. Coco Chanel sort of invented that two-tone shoe and it's a signature of the brand. It's been played on for years. Pant slacks, so they're pretty comfortable for like a long I do really like the shirt. Typically when I'm doing press, I do pants because you're sitting mm -hmm. for a long time, so it's better to be comfortable. And then this is one of my favorite chain. bags of all time. It's Stella McCartney. Stella? Can... Stella McCartney? Okay. I wouldn't think to see a Stella, but also weirdly enough, I can kind of see Sadie Sink as like a Stella McCartney girl. I think the look has a whole sort of Stella feeling, even though the top and the pants are what acne, the shoes are Chanel. It has a Stella McCartney sort of slouchy, oversized, very earth tony sort of feeling to it. More formal, but I'll wear it with something like this or I'll wear it with like jeans and a t-shirt and have it kind of be my one statement piece. Mm -hmm. Pretty sophisticated. I like this look, weirdly enough. I, I like less than the pants maybe are a little bit baggy and they might hit the floor a little bit strangely in my opinion but it has a very I don't know I would say journalistic feeling to it I feel like it looks like something that somebody as she said work meeting it like it is a working look but it's not like unfashionable it's not boring it's not Chico's chic it's intriguing and it's nice and she can move freely or be comfortable and at the same time it's not unfashionable it's not un chic it's not uninteresting it's just a different like kind of shirt cool like your classic like button up it's a little looser it's a more professional look while still having like you know keeping things a little interesting i love the way that it sort of cuts down you know those two little side elements that sort of jut down and sort of don't make it just a front facing button down shirt but rather it has intriguing elements and sections and it's contouring the body in its own Interviews way. are definitely something that I've also I've had to get used to. It is kind of weird just like sitting and, and meeting like different people all day. But I do hate the way that the pants hit the floor. Like, That's my one. Over over again, but if you were to do this look with just like a classic white button down it would be a little too boring or a little bit too mature but this is just kind of like She's a fun wrong. young fresh take on iconic staple in anyone's closet. Yeah, I don't love, love, love. There's not been like a look that I love, 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 but again, I do not hate this. I just hate the pant hem. But the rest of it I think is intriguing. I think it's very cool. I think everything that she's saying makes sense and it just is realistic, even though it's not, oh my God, and passion. it's realistic. All right, we're at Friday. What are we doing? We're going this out, we're going is crazy. A traveling slash no. running errands look. This is Acme Studios. Okay, it's it's travel girl. This half denim, half nylon. So it's like part bomber, part denim jacket, very deconstruction, reconstruction, but Oversized jacket, simple, acne fied. These are some acne cargo pants. But she I loves a little non-fitted of... pant and I kind of respect it because I also love a non-fitted pant. Pants from Acne Studios. The shoes are very I acne so much and I wore them all the time. And then I lost them and I'm trying to track down a new pair now, but they were, these are a close second. And then I've got my P448 sneakers, dad sneakers that I've Okay. I wear all the time and they're a little bit messy. I found the bag in, it was just in a random closet in my house. It definitely doesn't belong to me, but I've claimed it. It's from a whaling museum. Okay. I also love that like these are like very realistic. Like the whale museum tote bag is not like, oh my God, 
Prada 2001 like archive vintage, not a collaboration collection between Martine Rose and the Whale Museum. It's just this is a Whale Museum tote that I found and I took and I stole, which is very realistic for everybody involved. We love to see it. We do. Or at least I like to see it because and it's real, it's realistic. I'll go through like different tote bag stages. And so this one will be my go-to bag for like the next three-ish, four-ish months, we'll see. I read this book called In the Heart of the Sea that was kind of like the origin story that inspired Moby Dick. All about just kind of like the whaling industry. Okay, well-read like queen. And I mean, I look ridiculous when I do this, but I like walk down the street wearing these, just like giant headphones. Okay, very also Max. If you haven't seen the fourth season of Stranger Things, I will say no more because I'm not a spoiler girl, but like, Vecna who? What else is in here? A makeup wipe and then like probably four masks. <laughs> okay, again, I feel like this is very realistic. If we're going traveling, doing errands, whatever, like, this makes sense. I mean, like traveling, maybe we don't do a full tote bag. I like the fit of the jean. I like the oversized jacket. I think it's cute and chic. The sneakers, I think, fit with the whole look. I'm not like mad. I'm not obsessed. I'm not gagged. I'm not like, oh, but I get it. I also don't think she's like fashion, fashion. I think she's like very just normal human being, which I respect. Saturday. All right. This is my okay. workout she is look. A, Not necessarily like that I would work out an oversized this, lover. on the way to work out maybe. Or just okay. like, walking the dog or something like that, going on a walk. The off-white denim jacket, not that I'm saying it's the brand off-white, but it's like an off-white denim jacket with a little off-white cap, kind of like a the cap. little light green or light beigey sweat shorts and the sneakers, like she's like, look, it's minimal era. Cream, tan colors, which I like to do a lot. We've got a rag and bone baseball cap. I think this is an A gold cream oversized jacket. I like purposely got this like two sizes too big because I needed, I wanted Smart. it to be oversized. And then a little aloe sports bra and sweat. So aloe is like the new Lululemon, yes, right? I think. I don't know enough about like the sporty brands. Sorry. Short set. And then these are some Hoka. Oh, I do know what Hoka's are now. I've been informed. Shout out to my informer. I respect it. Still don't understand why like they're a brand that everybody loves or at least people like are obsessed with, but I know about it now. So they're like hiking shoes, I guess, but they're the most comfortable things in the world. Everyone in okay. my family for the most part is well, really just like my dad and like my older two brothers. They're very athletic. My dad was a okay. high school football coach for years and then you know my two oldest brothers played football all throughout high school. I don't think I really got the athletic um jeans i like taking like classes and stuff like that and recently i've just been doing a lot of walking which i guess still counts as some form of exercise me I'm like i'm so athletic because i walk listen i don't like hate this i think it's very realistic workout look not that i know like know anything about realistic workout looks like i haven't been to a gym in years so like i don't know what people actually wear but like this would be believable to me i would wear this to the gym i'd be like i look cute some people don't I look great. Yeah, she's cute. But again, like I'm not dying. I haven't died over anything this whole video. All right, Sunday, last chance. So <laughs> this is... She is working on the railroad all the way along day. Sadie looks like she is stoking the fires of love by like putting the coal. She's shoveling the coal into the furnace to keep the steam engine going. Thomas the Tank Engine, who? Oh, I don't know him. These are my favorite and only pair of overalls. And I think I wear them a little bit too much. I've got just like a plain white long sleeve t-shirt underneath. And these are some wild shoes that I've had for a while. Okay, a little creeper action. They look like the Prada ones because they look like the tire mark soles. I'm intrigued. Oh, and like the white ones, I don't really know how to style them, but this feels right. And yeah. you know, they're overalls. You can you can wear them like this and it can be super, I don't know, you can make more of a statement with it, I guess. Or you can- I am like so intrigued because I feel like if there's one person that I would think would wear Overalls, it low key would be Sadie Sink. Also, if you wear overalls, you have to like dedicate yourself. Like, I'm not that self confident enough to wear them, so I would never dedicate myself. 
but I respect that she is. I couldn't do it if she was wearing one of those little steam engine hats. I'd be like, wow, it's over. But it seems like she has a bucket hat in the hand. But honestly, I think she's channeling Steam Engine Charlie very well. Who Steam Engine Charlie is, I don't know. But like, she's channeling him, they, them, he, his, she, hers. Because it's there. You know what I mean? Steam Engine Charlie is, for everyone, equality in the gender world. But I think it's weirdly enough like a cute look. I'm not, again, not dying over it, but it's cute and somewhat realistic. I actually got these overalls with the intention of getting them really messy. I have a pretty big dog and things get messy. So I needed something to just like throw on when I was like, that's taking true. her on a walk or like I respect that. training her. And then the more that I wore them, the more I was like, you know, I think I, I, think I actually want to keep these. That's kind of a denim thing though, is like you buy denim and it should be good quality denim. It's hard to find good quality denim these days, I would say. For good quality denim, it's usually vintage. Denim, I think, is something that you're supposed to be housey in. It's something that historically, I think, has been, I would say, uh, out and about clothing. I ripped these pair of jeans. I ripped these pair of jeans playing soccer. Was I great at soccer? No. But did I dive for the ball? Yeah, I bent it like Beckham, baby. And then they ripped. And I was like, these are even cooler now because they're ripped because it's not even like a fake rip. It's like I ripped them doing sports. So I respect the fact that like she bought the jeans to be something that is more utilitarian and they're still chic. I'm embarrassed to admit how much I wear these. The other great thing about denim is like you're really not supposed to wash it a lot. I'm not saying that it's meant to like be dirty, but like it's a fabric that you're not really meant to wash all that often so if it does get dirty it's kind of like a badge of honor it's like you were doing things in these jeans you didn't like buy them pre-soiled i also understand wearing jeans a lot for things that are more again utility because kind of what they're there for that's what the fabric is good for maybe like three or four times a week i'll also like change throughout the day too so oh the wait i'm dead the ribbed mew mew shirt she's like this is just like a white shirt it's a ribbed Mew Mew branded shirt, but sure, absolutely, Sadie, whatever you say. They're a staple at this point. Comfort plus durability plus- She looks good in them. I like them, she's, the, she's changing my overall vibes. I have gone through like baseball hat stages, but right now I think I'm kind of, it's summer, so I'm transitioning into the, the bucket hat that. trend yet again. Cute look, not mad about it. I think it works. Overall, I'm not like, Oh, wow, but it's cute. All right, that's it. Thank you. Okay, this is all right. Thank Guys, you, Sadie. So I love much. this. Don't love this look. It was seven days, seven looks. Bye. Thank you, Sadie. We appreciate you. All right, so that is the end of this video. Let's talk about the best and the worst. I'm going to say, as for the best, I kind of am between the Chanel look and maybe the, the first sort of Saint Laurent jacket look. I think the Chanel look is probably my favorite because I think it's chic and cool and interesting. It's also runway. As for the worst look, I'm probably going to say between the casual denim look with the nylon bomber jacket mixed in or the aloe yoga workout look just because they're more like worky outy, not really like the fashion. But regardless, I don't think there was anything that was so, so horrible. I also don't think there was anything that was like so show stopping that I would remember it. I think it's okay. I think it was fine. I think it was nice. I think in reality, it was also like pretty realistic. Uh, it's stuff that I think anybody could sort of emulate and wear and relate to for the most part. Maybe not the Chanel like free fall, the runway look, but like everything else was pretty realistic. So yeah, I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments down below. And before I go, again, the first hundred people to use code HOLO mode get 20% off incogni. So go click the link in the description box below or use my code. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching and TTYL.